Today's video is going to be about the Prediction Princess archetype. It was used in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 anime. I don't remember what whatever her name was that used it. All I remember about her is she was in love with the main character. She read her future and then, well, she thought the main character was for her. And, oh, get it? Because Prediction Princess, future telling, the person who used it is, is future telling. Yeah, it's start off with Prediction Princess Coin. It's a foot monster, level 3 Earth Fairy. It lets you special on a level 3 or higher foot monster from your hand or deck in face down defense position. Also, you can activate monster effects for the rest of the turn except Prediction Princess monsters. Ugh, that's... Mm. It starts off pr amazing, but then goes... Whew, there's only, in total, the entire archetype has 11 cards in it. And uh, only a very few of them are actually monsters, so you're limiting yourself by a, a lot. And a lot of the, some of the other cards really help want you to play uh, flip support, where you it supports your flip monsters. This says the opposite, because now you can't use your flip monsters. And my next card, Prediction Princess Astral, is a level 3 dark fairy. I wonder if we're going to see Fairy a lot. Well, that's you during your end phase of the turn. It was flipped. Destroy as many defense position monsters your opponent controls as possible and inflict 500 damage to your opponent for each one. This was a part of a two-card combo that pretty much destroyed the main character from Arc 5. And if you're wondering what the other half of that combo is, it's Prediction Princess Petal, which on flip puts all your opponent's attack position monsters face down and they cannot change their battle position. So, with these two cards, you can flip all your opponent's monsters face down, and during the end phase, destroy them. And inflict damage. And even if you do not destroy them, just can't use them. It seems pretty devastating. Well, not really. There's definitely tons of ways to get around it. Well, moving on. Prediction Princess Arrow. You can, on Flip Summon, you can add a Ritual Spell from your deck or graveyard to your hand. Tell me if this next one sounds familiar. Prediction Princess Crystal, who, by the way, is a water fairy. <laughs> yeah, you see a lot of fairies. There, you can flip and add a ritual monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand. Wow. However, it's a level five, which means you're going to have to use coin to be able to use her. Prediction Princess, oop, wrong one. Prediction Princess Arrow is level 4, but we also have a level 9 monster. Prediction Princess Reveal Tech. Um, on flip, you can add a Prediction Princess monster, accept a copy itself, and a ritual spell from your deck to your hand. You can tribute this card and send to the graveyard. If this card is tributed inside the graveyard, you can special summon this card in face down defense position. You can only use that effect once per turn. Your opponent can't target virtual monsters you control with card effects. Also, they can't be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Alright, so let's go through these effects one by one. It's the first effect. It's the combination of the previous two monsters we just went over. You can add a whole bunch of cards to your hand. Two cards for one flip. And it has decent enough defense, so it might actually survive a turn. Not including destruction effects, but it helps your virtual monsters get protection from destruction. And if you can't tell, the archetype it has to do with virtual monsters a lot. So that seems pretty nice. You get to, well, do a bunch of stuff. And if it gets, you get rid of it for a virtual summon, <laughs> our virtual monsters might just be level 9. And it comes right back, face down. Which means you don't get its protection effect. Unless you flip it back up, somehow. Let's go over into Prediction Princess Tarot, a level 9. Light Fairy Monster, and it requires a Prediction Princess Ritual. That's that's a specific card. That's not a generic card. Just just confirming so you know. Once per turn during the end phase, you can special summon one flip monster from your hand or graveyard in face down defense position. See what I mean? How it's flip support, how it helps out all your flip monsters. Just any flip monster you want. It doesn't matter its level. doesn't matter anything about it. You can only use each of the following effects once per turn. 
and only once a turn. So they share a hard once per turn, meaning if you activate one of them, you can't activate the other. So you can either, as a quick effect, target a face-up monster and flip it face-down, or face-down monster and flip it face-up. And doesn't even have to be monsters you control. That sounds good. Let's go over that ritual spell I was talking about. Prediction Ritual. It's a ritual spell, obviously. <clears throat> this card is used to ritual summon Prediction Princess Tarot. You must tribute monsters from your hand or field whose total level equals 9 or more. During the main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can manage this card from your graveyard. Add one Prediction Princess monster from your deck to your hand. All right. Main setup. Um, you use this, no, this, yep, use the library, and you turn that into two rituals, a ritual monster and spell. You take this with this, and get your, your ritual monster, and then this goes back to your field. Now, you can use this to flip someone again, if you want to, or you can flip on your puns monsters, you can flip around other monsters, but that's not the only ritual monster we have. We have a... Super special ritual monster, Tarot 2. A flip ritual monster. Yes, that exists. It's the only one. It's a dark fairy, level 9, of course. You can ritual summon it using Underworld Ritual of Prediction. Oh, that's a new, wow, new ritual monster spell card. For, we couldn't just have used the previous one. Oh, that's sad. Must be ritual summoned or special summoned with the effect of. Um. No. Of this. Which, let's. If you remember correctly, it's you summon a ritual. Let's you summon a flip monster from your hand or graveyard. If I remember correctly, a ritual monster can't be summoned from your hand, even if you have a way to bypass that. So. But it can still be summoned from the graveyard if you have previously properly summoned it. Anyway, I will continue. E oh, so if I'm wrong about that, please tell me in the comments, please. I, I would I'd rather be right than wrong. Um, you can, all, you can only use each of the following effects. Once per turn, click effect, you can activate one of these effects. You either flip any number of face down monsters you control into face up to events, or flip any number of face up monsters to face down defense. Here's its flip effect. You can special summon one flip monster from your deck in face down defense position. Sorry if I was a little out there. You can summon any flip monster you want from your deck. That's pretty insane. So now we have ourselves a new combo. Well, maybe the underworld ritual prediction says otherwise. This card is used to ritual summon any prediction princess. Amazing. Ritual monster from your hand or graveyard in face up attack position or face down defense position. You must also tribute monsters from your hand or field whose total level equals or exceeds the level of the ritual monster you attempt to ritual summon. So, nine. During the standby phase, if you control a prediction princess ritual monster, you measure this card from your graveyard, special summon one non. Ritual Prediction Princess Monster from your deck and face down defense position. Alright, so you can use this, no, this, and get out your ritual spell and your monster. Then you, you sort of just start comboing and winning the game. However, we do have one last card. Black, Black Cat Apocalypse. It is a normal trip. It says during your opponent's battle phase. Ugh. That's that's gross. The last card I can think of about that has something similar that started like that was Linear Equation Cannon. And if a card starts the same way as a Linear Equation Cannon, that's pretty scary. Don't worry, this one's not though. If you control two or more face-up defense position monsters, end the battle phase. Not bad, you just end the battle phase if your opponent tries to take out your defense position monsters, you can just, no. And they have to be face down, so I might have accidentally said face up earlier. I meant face down. There is a reason why it's on screen. 
It also has another effect where you can banish this card from your graveyard and target two face-up monsters on the field, in including at least one prediction princess monster. Change them to face-down defense. So, you can take your opponent's monster and your monster face-down. Then you could just flip. Our whole entire deck is about flipping our opponent and ourself. This, combo with this, is a pretty nearly unstoppable combo. As long as you ignore the ways to stop it. Like, how difficult it would be to really get into this. Because where do you start? I, I've said before, you use a library. And library takes you into a ritual spell and a ritual monster. But how do you get into a library? You can't just summon it because it's level 9. So you have to use coin. But coin has to be flip summoned to use her effect. And how do you flip it? Well, by getting it attacked. Or flipping it with a card effect. So in archetype, if nothing else, and out of archetype, you put it face down your field. And then your opponent's turn, you hope they don't remove it by anything. And you can't even use black hat. Because black hat needs two or more face down defense position monsters to end the battle phase. And then you can get out Library, and then Library does her thing. If your opponent decides not to get rid of it, and during your turn you flip it up, then you're allowed to go into your Ritual Monster. And then you can start actually playing the game on your second turn, the third turn of the game, after your opponent only fully established a board. Of course, this is only an archetype, but if you want to go grab stuff out of archetype. However, coin specifically wants you not to play non-prediction princesses. Which gets kind of weird because you have to play non-engine, non non-archetype cards, just to be able to actually get out a combo, but in in archetype, the only way actually to play, make sure is you don't do that. I has anyone ever really played this well pure and one, I don't think so. And there's 11 times 3. That's 33 cards in deck. Meaning you have 7 more cards you have to somehow just put in there. It's possible. But I I have actually, I've tried it. It's not fun. To, it's very slow. It doesn't really do anything. But if you want to say otherwise, leave a comment down below. And while you're down below, you might as well top track this subscribe button. You're missing one piece of Exodia. You might be able to get it. And that's convulsion of nature. I guess you can now flip your deck upside down to find out what you're drawing next. Good luck next time.